Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good. That's good. Have a good weekend. Yeah, it was pretty good, pretty uneventful. Yeah. I haven't, uh, you know, I teach this class uh, remotely, so the option to not do it at the campus, but apparently there's like some water pipe that burst at the Idaho Fall campus, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. I heard like the parking lot was a river, so that doesn't sound good. But... <clears throat> How's the project going for all of you? I just got my parts yesterday. Cool. They arrived. That's good. I, I wanted to ask though, do you have like a, a format or an example of how you want the report to be? It is, it's in one of those other documents. It basically oh. says IEEE style. Um, you don't have to do two column. Um, but it should have like an introduction and then I describe the sections that you should include. Got it. So read through that. If you still have questions, let me know. So I, in your lab classes, are you required to write your reports in a sort of IEEE style? Not really. It's just... the ones I've taken. What, which one is that? I said not in the ones I'm taking. Yeah. So it's a pretty common report style. And I think I even put a link or a, um, the template up. I can't remember. Check on that. Yep, I inside of the written report um, PDF, there is a link to the IEEE templates, so you can find those in that that paper. So what I'm just so you all know what I'm talking about. If you go here uh, on this this written report guidelines, this has more more details. So the, you should have these sections in the conclusion. So the IEEE style might have different sections like, you know, methods or blah, 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 results, but you just, you know, you can just substitute these, these sections in, contain them within a introduction and a conclusion. Uh, if you would like, you can write an abstract, but you don't need to. I didn't say you have to, so. Uh, other other questions about the report or the project? Um, oh, also, I guess, so did any of you choose to work on a team? Are any of you working as a team? Okay, all, all individual. All right, that works fine. Um, so that, yeah, that works fine and um, you know, I, in some ways it should be easier to, to do this all as an individual anyways, give you more uh, freedom to do the project as you see fit. So 
Um, I think the only other thing related to the report is there is likely, there will probably be a change. Um, I have not to a little bit of the final timeline. So uh, during these two class sessions, um, I, I'm going to be at a conference. So I'm either gonna have one of my grad students teach one or both of them and probably going to change this from the um, meetings to uh, maybe a class period. We'll see. So I'm, I'm still working through this, but just um, be prepared and know that these, there may be some changes to these four days as, as far as um, which classes are, are when. <clears throat> but mainly I just wanna make sure that we finish and get through this um, chapter two. So today we're gonna look at the traveling waves and then we'll start on chapter two, which is about transmission line theory. And this is a transmission line theory is probably one of the more likely things like depending on what field you go into, but this transmission line theory is probably the, the more likely stuff for you to see again in another field compared to the um, electrostatics or the magnetostatics. So the time varying fields, you will probably come across this again in the transmission lines, what you'll probably come across again, whereas the rest of the stuff is foundational to understanding these topics but the problems are so, um, you know, a lot of them are so fundamental or, or, or basic that, you know, you don't really end up doing stuff like that in a, in a career. So uh, just know there might be some changes to, to this. Is that, um, any questions or comments on that? <clears throat> the likely change would be do you, maybe on, I, on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I will have you set up a time, like schedule a meeting time with me to tell me about the status of your, your project. And actually, maybe even next week. So I'll come up with an answer for this by um, next week about what we can, we can do here. So um, if you do have any questions, just let me know. Um, but we're getting getting close to the end. All right, the exam too, I think, did you all see the email with your exam attached and my comments? Did everyone see that? Okay, so the average was the same as the last exam, so I thought that was good. Um, the standard deviation was uh, smaller though, so there was uh, fewer, fewer outliers um, on this exam. So, um, but again, you know, there's only what, six, people in the class. So the statistics don't really, you know, they, it's kind of hard to make a lot of inferences with this few, but I think um, overall this exam, um, I think it was a little bit harder, but I think you all did actually a little bit uh, better as a class. So thank you for your hard work. And um, yeah, I, I think it went well and I hope you all feel that it went well. Does anyone have any questions about the exam or, um, Anything uh, related to that exam? If you want the solutions, we just have to make video again, right? Yeah, if you want to know how to do a problem specifically, then meet with me and I can show you how to do specific problems or give you a start or whatever. Um, Works so today after class or Thursday after class I'm I'm happy to do that I just don't typically post the full exam solution but I am happy to walk you through how to solve um, any exam problem in one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings or talk about like where you went wrong on the exam so I'm happy to do that with you I think I tried to hopefully you all realize this I felt you know, there's the one problem, that problem with the H field of the rings. That one I felt like was a little bit trickier, which is why I, in the review session, I basically showed you how to do a pretty big part of that problem, which is how to find the um, H field due to a, a ring of, of current. Um, 
and which was what you would either need to do or need to remember how to do quickly um, for that that final problem if you're going the BOS of art route. So hopefully that I think quite a few of you caught that hint. If you tried to do it using the um, Ampere's law route, it is possible, but the um, you need to be pretty careful in choosing your um, Amperian curves, which makes that one a little bit more more tricky to do um, that way. <clears throat> so, um, any other questions, comments? Okay. So let's move on. What we're gonna do uh, starting today and this week is we will look at today we will look at some problems related to waves so this will be a little bit of a review most likely so uh, we'll take another look at waves and we'll basically look at some of the terminology we use and how to solve some of the uh, look at some of the simple waves and then in the rest of the class, this transmission line theory, we're going to look at how waves propagate on transmission lines. So <clears throat> today, we'll review waves. And then the rest of class, the rest of the semester, And sometimes we could even say, look at waves traveling in guided structures. So does anyone know what I mean by guided structures or the difference between a guided and an unguided wave? Traveling through a medium. Yeah, so unguided waves, yeah, they're often traveling um, through a medium like air or something. Um, but you could you could fill a guided a guided structure with a medium. <clears throat> so like a physical medium and one that's not a physical. <clears throat> yeah, so Guided guided waves uh, travel in some kind of um, mechanical structure or built structure, and the purpose of these guided waves is that it allows the propagation of the wave to occur in almost one direction only. Okay, so do you remember? Um, I think probably from your physics two class looking at like, uh, uh, like, I think it's Huygens principle, right? Looking at this, does this sound familiar? And then you're looking at uh, slits. Is this, do you all remember this? Yeah, I do. Kind of a classic experiment. So <clears throat> if you have a source, a wave source here, right? What we're seeing is that the wave travels it's spreading out like everywhere around this source. So it's traveling in all of these directions. It's expanding spherically. And that's what you see when you get to this new slit, right? Is that it's once this wave gets here, it almost looks like it's flat. And then once it goes through here, it turns into another little um, uh, source like this. So guided waves are a way of making a wave travel in basically one direction only. Some kind of mechanical structure. There's a number of different ones, but they um, kind of take this energy and instead of it propagating spherically, they're clever structures that make the, the wave um, propagate in just the one direction only. So probably you can see the there's you know a lot of advantages to being able to do that, um, but in particular, right? You can if you can make 
put a guy a wave into a guided structure and the guided structure is long, you can make the wave travel a long distance in a guided structure so that you could um, give um, you, communications or informations across that distance. <clears throat> and so this, these, this guided structure part uh, falls under transmission line theory. So that that's what um, so we're going to review waves today, and then the rest of the the semester we're going to look at how waves can travel in these guided structures. So any questions, thoughts, ideas? All right, well, let's take a look at uh, a wave. <clears throat> All right, uh, I realized too. So as of this morning, you should you can go on to the Moodle page and you can access this. I um, made it available to you. So <clears throat> what we have in this problem is we have a uh, two kilohertz sound wave traveling in the X direction in air. It has a differential pressure um, given as 10 Newtons per meter at a given X and time. So we have, if we look here, right, you have a PXT. So this is a X and a time, and then you're given what those X and times are. You know what the reference phase is. And now we're trying to find a complete expression for this differential pressure. Okay, we also know that the velocity of the, the sound in air 330 meters per second, which means I think we're also assuming a temperature, but that's not given in this problem. So we'll just give it as this. So we're given, this is the, the standard form of the wave that we'll use in this class, right? This is the standard form of the wave. So we have a wave that's propagating in distance and time, right? We have amplitude, we have the time variance, the spatial variance, and then a reference phase, and then a period and a wavelength. Okay, so the goal, right? So what this problem is saying is fill in all of the answers for, or fill in, figure out all of the missing variables for this. <clears throat> all right, so let's see. Well, Let's go into uh, some breakout rooms. <clears throat> and so take a moment, work on this, and then um, work with someone else in the, in the breakout room to see if you can figure out what, what's missing here.
equals f lambda. Okay, so. All right, how are you guys doing? The labor's still working on it. Yeah. So, okay, so like 36 degrees is the, um, I can't remember what that one is called, the something knot, whatever that is. Yeah, that will be your phi knot. So that's the reference angle basically saying compared to something, this is the angle that the wave is at. So you have your wave, right? And the wave can shift left or right. Like if you have a cosine wave, um, right? So cosine wave starts at, at one right on the y-axis, but you could add a phase shift and you could move it left or right. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could advance it or uh, uh, impede it. And that's what that, that angle is, is about. Other, other questions? Uh, because two, one thing, this is a little weird, but is something good to know. Right, we are electrical engineers. And so this means like two things. We do a lot of math, but we also, and we use a lot of, um, we use a lot of sinusoidal functions, but it also means that depending on our application, we're using the math, but we're, we're interested in labeling things in degrees and not radians, right? So you guys are probably all familiar with that, right? Like. We talk about frequency, but often that means uh, normal frequency, not radial frequency. So in a problem like this, do just keep in mind that uh, right, we often as electrical engineers, we're gonna be giving like things like that reference angle and degrees. So that's the common way to talk about a reference angle in electrical engineering is in degrees. But when you're plugging this stuff into your calculator, you might need to use radians if the other stuff is in in radians or depending on what uh, it you know you have with the math situation so just keep that in mind so. all right well i'll give you a few more minutes then uh, any other questions before i go yeah All right, how are you guys doing? I think we're doing okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, how far have you got? So we have A is the amplitude 10 newtons per meter squared. Okay, so is, is the amplitude going to be 10? So or maybe better what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, let's take a look at this momentarily. This means, what, what this means, what this sentence means is saying, we know, okay, we have a pressure at X equals zero, T equals 50 microseconds is equal to, 10 newtons per meter squared. So does that mean that A is 10? Um, does it mean at those values, A is 10? It means at those values, A, uh, at those values, this is equal to 10. And so you can plug this in, you can plug x equals zero in here, t equals 50 in here, you know the phi, and then you can get a, You then you can know. So what you can do is you can know what a is, uh, or you can know what this is, and you can know what the full thing, a times this is, but you can't quite know what a is. 
So okay. Did I um I may have so let's let me write this as another thing. So this is uh so a times something you can calculate. Yeah. Ten. Okay. So well, assuming we have uh, the right value for for t and lambda, then we yes. can yeah. find a. So t, right? This is the period, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you know how to find the period? Just uh, one over the frequency. Mm -hmm. And then, what about the wavelength? Um, vel velocity divided by the frequency. Yeah, so you're you're pretty pretty darn close. And then, do you know what this is? Also, the thirty six degrees reference. Yeah, exactly. So I think you're pretty close. The only, the other thing that I said to the other group that I want to mention to you is right. We're electrical engineers, so we will we will almost always be talking about things like reference phases in degrees. Right. This is super common for engineers, and I think you've done other like work um, tech work too, Kate, is that right? Do you guys always use degrees? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I so think we used to always use degrees. Yeah. So we're just, we like love using degrees, but because we're engineers, it means we also are using like all these sinusoidal functions all the time, which are, you know, you need to calculate in radians. So just, um, keep in mind that this is a, you know, kind of a classic issue that you have to deal with in electrical engineering is that when you're talking to people or giving information, right, you're going to talk in degrees. But when you, if you have to crunch some numbers, you're probably going to need to convert it to radians at some point. Okay. Or at least, yeah, you need to be mindful of, of what you're, what units your calculator is dealing in and what you're in. So, right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, I'll give you uh, a few more minutes to wrap this up. Do you have any other questions before I give you a few more minutes? So you can convert two degrees by, you multiply by two pi, divide by 180? Yeah, so you can do, um, yeah, so let's I'll pull the notes back up. I'll show you how, what I usually do to remember this. Okay, I just, draw like a axis and from trig right this is zero and this is pi all right so if i go all the way over here half a turn this is 180 degrees to pi so if i want to convert like 36 degrees then i could multiply by pi over 180. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, or I guess technically pi rad and you right. can get into radians. And of course, too, um, you could go further in the same. Um, you could also do this would give you the same result. Okay. Yeah. It just depends on whether or not you want to, you know, remember convert using full circle or half circle. But that's, yeah. that's how I usually remember it real quick. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Nope, that was all. All right, all right, I'll give you a few more minutes. able to get in yeah i know i was nervous no. all right get to the final answer yeah yeah cool all right well then um any questions on the problem it's, this one was pr pretty basic pretty straightforward and none of these are meant to be none of these wave ones are meant to be like real you know 
uh, real tricky or anything. They're mostly review. Did you, I don't think at ISU, you guys don't do partial differential equations. Is that right? It's not required? Partial differential equations? Oh. Um, I mean, I've taken differential equations. Um, I don't, it's, I don't think it's required, but you can take it. Um, I think what I did is I took that class and substituted it with a required class. Uh, okay. But I couldn't pass, so I just needed to convert or something. But I think you can take it whether it's selective or substitution for a required class. Ah, uh, okay. So this you this type of uh, wave equation is really common to look at in if you take a partial differential equations class. So <clears throat> salt like solving these equations um, using like boundary conditions or something. That's where these waves come in a lot. You might have seen. I don't know if there's another class where you've looked at these waves with time and spatial change, but. Um, it's you know pretty similar to having just one dimension change. All right. Well, I'll uh, close all these breakout rooms and we'll meet up in the main one and look at the final answer. Yeah. All right, so the rest should be joining in just a moment. Uh, can one of you tell me what the what answer you got for this? Is it P? AK and I ended up getting a uh, 32.36 for yeah, A. That's what I got. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, okay, so 32.36. And then what did you have for the period? Were you asking? Yeah, yeah. What's what should be the the period? I have point five milliseconds. Okay, and then we have <clears throat> what's the wavelength? I have zero point one six five. Okay. All right, I think this is, is this what, what you all got? Yeah, pretty close, or, yeah. I think to, let's see, if I convert this, what I get is, is this, or pi times 10 to the third T. <clears throat> Well, oops. Um, it's going to be minus 12.12 12 pi. Right. So, yeah, minus. Ah, uh, yeah. Oops. This should have been minus. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, that is the answer that I got. So any questions on this problem? Where did the minus come from? Yeah, I am just looking right now. I think that I actually, I may have, um, let me look at this. I think when I put down the, that like standard wave, Yep, yeah, that's the problem. <clears throat> the standard wave equation 
is, I, I have a mistake in here. This should be minus. Okay, so that's a mistake. That's typically how it's written. So that was, yeah, it was simply a mistake. Uh, other questions? Let's see if I can. Yeah, it's just a mistake. So, okay. Let's look at another problem if there's no more questions. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in this second problem, we have another pressure wave given. Um, let me double check this. It's given example one. Make sure that that plus is correct since the. Yes, okay. All right, yes, so uh, this is given, uh, this is also given correctly. Double check this again. Okay, yeah, this is still, this is a mistake again. Okay, so this should be a minus sign. Uh, sorry about that. I will fix this and re-upload it. So we have a pressure wave uh, that was from this other example. <clears throat> and we want to plot the pressure wave for the following situation. So you should plot this versus x. So this is a uh, wave for x, and then the time is 0. And then you should also plot it as a function of time, where x is equal to 0. And you should, it says, sketch the wave for two cycles, which just means you know, if one, one full cycle for cosine is this. So the second full cycle would be this one. Okay, so how, how do you think you should go about sketching these? Well, what what would you need to know to do a sketch of this? So where if where would I if we're going to start sketching? Let's say you start when x is equal to zero. What do you need to know to about where to put down your pen and start the sketch? Amplitude. Yeah. So we know the amplitude, but we need to know the amplitude at x equals zero. So how do we find that? 
evaluate. Yeah, we can evaluate it and find a reference phase, right? So we can find the result of the cosine at x equals zero and t equals zero, right? So that will give you information about where to start this. Uh, what about uh, for how to know how you do two periods or two cycles? So you should also figure out what the period of the wave is, right? So I'll give you a few minutes. So see if you can plot these waves for those two different scenarios. So figure out what you need to start at. So where, where should you put your pen down? And then when you've drawn these two cycles, figure out what the, the period is for each cycle so that you can make some x-axis uh, labels. All right. So write those down. Once you have uh, them finished, upload it to the Google Drive.
All right. So how's how's it going? What's what's the does anyone have an answer for the first part? So let's let's start with what what is this point? Did anyone get where we were going to start here? Five. Yeah. Five. Nope. Should be five. And then what about the period? What's the period for this? This wave. So let's let's look at it. So we're set t equal to zero, right? <clears throat> so from our standard. Form, right? We know we could write this as this, right? So, what is the what is the period? The point one or point zero one? Zero one sort of close how how would we solve let's let's equate something right so do you this part should be equal to this does, does everyone agree give, give me a thumbs up yeah i was looking at the wrong one uh, but, yeah do you agree that we could equate these two things yes Okay, so we and in fact we can, and this is you know a common trick when we're working with waves. We can equate parts of these wave equations. So we must have this relationship. So now, what is the period? It's 1.5, but yeah. um, if we're getting two cycles, it's going to be three. So. Yep. All right. So let's go back here. So this is five. This is 10. This is what the maximum is. So we know that the maximum wave could go up to 10. So. This is, you know, not going to be the best wave, but right now we have something. Let's see, need to go a little bit further. Actually, yeah, we'll go. Right, so this is three halves. And this is three. Makes sense. Can you do it for this one? So where will we start this one at? We're gonna start the same five. Yep. Okay. And then what is the period?
It's going to be like 0 0.001, right? Let's see here. <clears throat> I think so. Yeah. Yep. 0 0.001. So I think the only other question is when we started the first one, yeah, we had the same phase, but is there any phase advance on the second one? which there isn't any phase advance. So this one, <clears throat> or there isn't the same amount. So we should go. <clears throat> okay, is this what you got, Calvin? Yeah, I, I accidentally messed up on, on the shift, though. So. Yeah, let's see if we can explain the shift. Okay. So the shift comes from, let's see. Trying to think of how to explain this. Uh, the shift basically comes from the fact that the, um, when you are plotting the time wave, you, yeah, when you're plotting the time wave, the, the phase shift, um, you can think of this term as moving the the wave forward or backwards in space. And when you're plotting it in time, uh, you're just looking at one place in space. And so that's where this different um, phase comes from, or the way that you start, um, rather than starting, you know, here. Ooh. I don't know what's happening. What's going on? Rather than starting here, right? We've started here. <clears throat> okay. So that is sketching a couple of these, and the key thing that we did here is that we looked at the fact that we can equate parts of the wave equation to other parts like if we have a known wave equation we can equate it to the standard wave equation to determine some unknown part of our wave equation and that is also i believe what we do in the um, third problem where we have a ocean wave OK. 
uh, so does anyone have any other questions on this one before we move on? All right, so let's do this, this one. So we have an ocean wave in this one. And so we have another wave and we wanna determine the phase velocity and the wavelength. And we wanna sketch the wave at time equals two seconds for a range, uh, an X range. So similar to what we did in that last one, right, we want to sketch at t equals two seconds on the x from zero to two wavelengths. We want to sketch two wavelengths of the wave. Okay, now one thing, right, we were given this wave in a sinusoid form, but Right, this is the the way that we are going. Like the cosine is what we're used to giving the uh, wave identity in. So you should convert this from the sine form into the cosine form. All right. So first, convert this to a cosine wave. So let's do that first. I'll give you a few minutes to work on converting this into a cos into a cosine wave. I think two, one hint, I think it would be maybe easier. I should have, because we're already using X. I'll, let's change this to theta. So the argument, if the argument is theta, you can convert to cosine wave in this way, just to make that clear. All right, so anyone got an answer? What should we have this as? What should be inside of here? I have uh, negative 0.6x. Uh, plus the one from the T portion and then minus pi over two. Yeah. Um, all right, and is there a reason it was one instead of 0 0.5? Um, because it's a uh, T equals two seconds, so two times 0.5 ah, is okay. one. All right, so let's, I'll write it generally and then let's, yeah. Oh, then, okay. Uh, Sorry. But yes, okay. So, yes, at for the general case, we could write it as this. And then what is, what is pi half equal to in degrees? Just 90 degrees. Yeah. All right. Anyone? Agree, disagree? Oops. 
Okay. So now, yes, that's what I got as well. So now, right, the things that we want to know, right, you want to be able to figure out what the uh, wavelength is, right? So figuring out what the wavelength is and how to plot this. So what, what should we do in order to determine those, those, that piece of information? Would have evaluated at x equals zero. Yeah, and we also know a few other pieces of information, right? So zero point six. What is this equal to in that standard wave equation? Should be Two like pi to my, oh sorry. Oh, uh, like this. Sorry, is this? Oh, I got the wrong one. Sorry, you go. You go ahead. Okay, I wrote this in a slightly different. What about 0 0.5? What is 0 0.5 equal to? Does this look correct? Yeah. Okay. So, can you determine from the things that we know, can you determine what the wavelength is? We know anything about the velocity? Uh, we don't, but you could figure it out. You could uh, find the velocity. So let's see here, let me open a new. So we don't know what this is, but we do know this relationship. We have two, two relationships that we do know. So this, right, we have this relationship. And then do you know what do you know the relationship between velocity and wavelength? The wavelength times the period. Yeah, so I, I often think of this. This one right has the uh, meters per second. So that must mean that and I think this is what you were we're getting at. But now we have this yeah whoops. Yeah, so we have these two things, right? So if we can figure out a way to multiply them by each other. So now can you find a velocity? Yeah. Point five or point six. which is something like this. Uh, now too, I wanna point out, 
we're almost at the end, but we're these. This is so common. This is so common to do. What do we call this? Yeah, there's a name for two pi times. Yeah, so this is so common. We'll call we call this angular frequency. This one is also ends up being very common. Does anyone know what we call this one? Is that beta? Yes, this is beta, which is the propagation constant. So you can think of this as a description of how a wave travels through a uh, given media. So this this beta coefficient uh, is here. So sometimes, so we'll see this one called omega, uh, which of course we're quite familiar with, and this one is is called beta. And of course we can, you know, we're we're uh, we're smart, right? So we can also derive these on our own. We've figured out some ways to uh, derive these right here, um, and we can do the same with um, with this case, right, where we can see that we could write um, two pi over zero point six multiplied by <clears throat> the frequency here. Right to get the, oops, yeah, to get the wavelength. And then for the wavelength, right, we could write this. <clears throat> and this wavelength also is uh, frequently expressed as. 2 pi over beta as a way to get the wavelength. So using this information, you should now know, be able to determine uh, what the wavelength is, what the standard form of the wave equation is for this. And like the previous problem, should be able to plot this wave over two wavelengths. So from um, zero to two times the wavelength number that you get. All right, any questions about these wave problems? All right, if there's no questions, feel free to take off. If you do have any questions about these wave problems, the exam, et cetera, feel free to stick around and um, I'm happy to answer those questions. If not, I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. Yep, bye. Uh, Dr. Price, I'd like us to go over the uh, exam. Okay, I'm trying yeah. to pull up the the email you sent so I can. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay.